Okay, so um, moving on to fellow colleague, uh, Dr. Elu, to give your presentation this afternoon, please. The floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Elu Chukwukan. I'm a lecturer um, at the of Technologies Institute for Security. And the area is uh, applied to technology. I was supervised by the year who did the first keynote here. So I'm, I'm trying to present on assessing service security risk to the year to bring the support as well. Um, I would apologize first of all that uh, this has to do with a lot of social science research, but I'm not an expert in that. You know, this idea said after some time, I, the work I did to the mess of structure, when I did my project on the site to the mess of structure. So, this is some work is a pre funded project that has to do with uh, the data cyber project. So, we do some review papers, um, review papers on the area of uh, some speech regulates the additional industries and uh, maritime industries, and uh, also on, on different areas. So, we discover that the world is getting smart and the things like in, in aircrafts, we talk about in the level aircraft. We also talk about uh, the maritime, but also talking about uh, autonomous ship. And uh, some of these things started making me feel that if the world is just moving up, and uh, and some of the things we say that the more uh, the more um, the more you, you computerize, the more you have what's called uh, cyber attacks to uh, um, surface. So as I just did it, I said, oh. so I have a research group in Nigeria where we do some under some research. So I would tell them, think. <laughs> We need to start looking at nations, their preparedness to this industry for zero. So after discussing with them, they felt you can do some work with this. I'm not an expert, so don't ask me such true science questions. I will be so I'm just asking. But it's just the kind of a thought we have but from this work. And with that the introduction, some of the works related to it, you know, industry for zero and some security, some what drives industry for zero from our work is for interview access. And which is leads to knowledge based economy, then the effects this has on education curriculum and uh, what we did, method and survey materials, analysis. I'm not, I just have to do too much I know from what I've learned from those research papers. So, this is the best 4.0, and which has to do with income information. So, it's affecting everything. You know, but I remember one of the work we did on cyber engines, we discovered that, you know, that is, the system is, is becoming more thinner. There is almost Little or no demarcation between IT and OT. And that is why the impact is the, the more challenging aspect of industry 4.0. So it's not like that the IT and OT are just merging together. And the more it becoming more computerized, the more intelligent the system becomes. But you know, the point, like I was asking the question last, things are becoming more smart. And to me, I think, I don't know, I'm not a psychologist, but I think we're becoming more, more slave to technology, you know. This morning, I was just coming. I, I forgot some few things. My research and there, but I had to go back home to feed them because I was feeling like I was missing something. You know, so I, I think I'm going to skip for this. So, you know, so 4 is getting things smarter. We're moving on a very really faster speed. But we're not facing that. We're not having a balance. We're almost losing it. So, we're almost like on a speed limit. I don't know what it means, but that's what I discovered. You know, that you know, so 4.0 is part of the high speed internet. You know, we think of 5G. For fact, you move to 6G, you keep G in. And you know, I don't know where we're taking us. Possibly, we think of how you can fly and take something to fly, not even work again. You know, so cloud technologies, like if you watch what you were saying this day, it's always something he's talking about. You know, the cloud technology is what is called powered by uh, computing on the go. So it's helping data access and making things move faster. Everybody's moving to the cloud, even in some ways, but you know, the reason is simple it's just computing on the go. You know, the data science, you know, I remember many years ago I was doing a PhD with him. He was telling us, look, he went to see that in the near future there will be a kind of a cloud, a, a, a cyber data. That's what we call it, cyber data. You know, data science and cyber security will match together because you can't do cyber security without understanding data. Because things are automated. And if it's automated, if you don't understand how to do machine learning and data, you can't understand how to detect cyber attacks. Right now, what is going to convert me to data science? So, I'm learning from that because she's an expert in big data technology. So, I'm learning to use it to combine my work. So, we need AI technology. This is probably a good time. But recently, she was telling me about different machine learning models. You know, we talk about generalizability. So, what is this one again? He said, yes, we're looking at how to generalize 
take the machine learning concept so that if you if you work with a particular data set, it also carries into a different facet. You don't need to develop a new model. I say, yeah, so, so you are having problems. So and it's not about smart system, IT, IoT, and uh, there is high level of integration taking place. So, what are the implications of this for education of policy? To be honest, if, if we don't change our curriculum as fast as possible, we lose it up. You know, everything is getting smart. I want to teach smart things. I want to train people that smart, but at the same time, they control. You know, there's this consciousness about the division of privacy and efficiency. I was something it's, I was discussing with the students. I said there's a problem. You know, AI cannot function effectively without uh, the way we anonymize data. Because the more anonymized you have data, the more you bring in more data. And of course, it's not always easy to get all the of data that AI can learn and keep learning and learning. You know, now for you to this is not really smart. It's just that the more you feed them, the more they learn from it. So if you withdraw from them, they're not having to learn from it. So they will not have the knowledge of what to do. So I think there's a problem of what is actually going to be privacy. You know, recently somebody was saying that look, in the near future, internet will know about you, what they are related, even when they are children or parents. Because internet will know what you did last year, this year, even many years before. So now we're talking about what is actually private. So there is a definition going on on what is actually private to you as a person. If you must make AI to work, you need to define policy. And then we talk about broad AI ethics and practice and laws. There are a lot of laws coming in, you know, but I don't know how much you can go because those in AI want us to leave data as it is so that AI can learn and become more smart. But the government has said, no, the more you learn, the more we lose control. So what do we do about it? You know, and there's a many of influence, you know. I think I think it was several cents last year, last two years, someone was talking about seven hundred per year. See, there's going to be a seven hundred per year because since there's going to be attacks coming, there's violence inside attacks, air attacks, then we need to study the the the, the, the uh, um this this uh, cyber attack as how do they grow, when do they start, how do they mature, how do they become uh, so you see we're going to study this as some human beings, the studies of development. So there are new fields coming up, you know, and the emerging new fields are last in there. So there will be, like I said, pushing of cyber security and data. Because the more automated the attacks are, the more cyber security will move away from what it is now. So we need to think of these automations. How do you dictate data? You know, like I think mean, uh, David was talking in the morning. You know, Stokesnet has a lot of de defined cyber security completely because of the way this is operate. So we need to be quite ahead of time. You know? And then there's going to be more, I say, international IT or IT. You know, I see some of these systems. You know, it feels screwed. You just punch on the keyboard, on the, on the screen, and the system will need to work. But what are the implications? You think it's biggest map? You know, there's a special cyber attacks. You know, there are a lot of AI based attacks. One of the surveys we did, we discovered that what are the things that are happening, you know, like autonomous ship, the problem we're going to have is not just only GPS or whatever spoofing, but you know, the more you, the sophistication, the more you have the software interface. And the software interface, they're having problems in terms of this system because of the legacy systems, integrating with the new systems. There is a knowledge gap somehow where the two come together. You know, if they're not properly fused, they create a space where attacks are taking place. So it's becoming a So it's making attack surface more sophisticated and the systems are exploiting it by using AI based attacks. You know? There's going to be less human, more machine to machine uh, communications. You know? And then threat dynamics and automation. I can talk about AI based attacks and body start attacks. They will be more common as we move on because as systems getting up the network, the attack level keeps getting. And of course, what we discover now is all the attackers, the tools that are developing more and more in favor of AI based attacks and body start attacks. They are studying more about human behaviors. And they use it to develop uh, these worms and the uh, and the uh, tools for to rise. So the more they do that, the more it gets to different lines. So what are the skill gaps that we created? I think it was even more something about how many thousands of uh, uh, skill gaps coming up in cyber security. It's true because what we learned many years ago are no longer relevant. This time, in fact, if you learned sociology in the morning before last few years, if you don't change it. To move it into a competing related one, you might be, might be, necessary, might be useful. You know, I was talking to one of my friends in India who 
did some years back PhD here, you know, but he wants to do postdoctorate. Why? He doesn't fit in any longer because the field is moving very fast and he needs to learn AI machine learning in, in geography. We need to understand how to automate and then become faster in decision making. So you see, there's going to be some skill set gaps in managing autonomous systems. You know, we, we talk about autonomous cars, we talk about autonomous traffic. In fact, those in transportation, they're talking about how to make traffic less autonomous and more, more, um, more intelligent systems. So there will be highly connected smart systems besides smart devices, and most of them will be cloud dependent. Like I said, the cloud is driving this because of this ability to fit the team data. It's no longer the time we have data assembled <laughs> in the office where you have to be able to get it out there. But once it's in the cloud, it become more easy to access. So, and like a, last time, I know I remember they were talking about remote collaboration. He has come to say there's nothing can do about it. It's true that COVID is going, but the truth is that the world will never go back to what we see before. There are people who demand physical let's have this system that you know it's all people if you think how much. You will spend to travel and you say, Can I get it high? Uh, let us say, Why not? Let to have it. You know, I think the best option is we keep looking for how to make it more secure and easily accessible because I'm not sure the world will get back to us to have a human relationship or go to a meeting and see a lot of people. COVID is going, but people are not easily coming. Even in the school, I mean, even in classrooms, the students will prefer, Oh, we have to have physical classrooms. They say, hey, is there any uh, virtual option? I don't know. Tell me. Is it, I'm not sure. But <laughs> what if I have to with back on? He said, okay, maybe we'll look for it. So please just look for opportunity for me not to come so I can stay home and take the class. So, exactly. So, but let's look at intangible assets and the knowledge based economy. What are the intangible assets? In terms of the review of this report, we discover that the way all nations at this point is developed by the level of intangible assets they have. It's no longer the time, you know, you know what I mean by intelligent assets is the innovation capital and the social capital. You know, the more you have, I think the studies say that about 36% of the weight of the nations depends on the level of innovation they have. And more also, they have much the room to make the investment friendliness. So it's not that the education capital is growing and it's driving the system. And what are education capital? Talk about the knowledge, you know, the skills people have and know how from the population. And we also discovered that the more educated is the system is, and the more they have a investment friendly, the more stable the nation is. And I'm, I'm the only thing I think is true. The more the less educated you have the population, and the less technical you have, the more chaotic they are. Because they are always trying to meet up with the system. Their mind is always racing to know what is new, but they're not developing it. So they become more chaotic. So the social capital, you know, form of belief. You know, let me of us, I knew I was discussing with some of them, you know, they were saying something about it. In Saudi Arabia, some of the things are changing. Because they need to understand that the belief system is affecting people. Great because the way the science is moving, it's difficult to hold it strongly with their belief system. The more you try to hold it, the more it keeps breaking up and the more it keeps opening up the system. So I was just listening to the conversation when they are talking about it. You know, someone said he went to Saudi Arabia and some of these other countries. That things are changing. I said, yes, because. The technology is making things really to open them up. You know, there are things you don't longer hold strongly as used to be before. Even information, you know, I was talking with somebody saying, my little child just pick up the tablet. I was telling what's happening in America. I said, yes, because there's information you have to operate. It. And you know, the level of trust are things that are helping the, the system grow, which is part of the internet asset. Attitudes and behaviors, quality of formal and informal institutional perception, just like the rule of law and how nations. Where I work, you know, you also, you also know that you know some countries people don't go that they say, no, these people are not friendly. The you know, way their laws are, you know, but the more this is are uh, more friendly and easier to be, the more people get that. Why is it because the intangible assets helps to the drive knowledge economy, which has to do with the patents, the potency, the knowledge, the develop the the knowledge economy is more of knowledge sharing and the how you talk about. What are the materials and methods of our research? We did about 21 items which are very discernment. You know, we, we are trying to administer it to people that are in governments and those who are in policy making and those who are not never just and university, especially the union leaders. You know, because these are the people that talk about the laws, the policies that drive this system. So we try to find out for them what does it look like in Nigeria in terms of this, all these internal assets? On what level are we? 
So that's why we choose this particular thing because they are at the center of it. We also need to the Minister of Communication because there's a unit there called Digital Vision State. They are responsible for training of government and educational institutions on government policy. So the Minister of Communication and Digital Economy in Nigeria, they, they, the laws are met, passed on to them, they now give you the DVI, they now train. So they know most of the time to be an idea. When look at the universities, universities and government places, they participated because these are the people that know what is going on in the system. So if the system is moving, they will tell you. If it's not moving, they will tell you. Of course, the civil servants will know will drive every economy because they implement the policies. So let's look, look at analysis, result, and discussion. We ask these two questions. To what extent in Nigeria is to what extent is Nigeria prepared to live to the emerging part of national education? Because we know that this system is driving a lot of things. And being able to get the best of it to help to leverage most of the development indices that the nation was lacking before. And also look at how the energy industry is mitigating the sophisticated cyber attack related to what the national division. Like, I think the last one of the two speakers was talking about the supply chain. You know, we are, yes, the kind of thing the fire has made. Even if you're not at the center of it, somehow you become a member by either becoming a supply chain or you are you use something. So, Nations are going to get connected together. So you need to have that level of compliance if you don't dump a, a, a low point for others who are participating in the business. So we look at, we took it for about two months to share the question. Yeah. Basically, we did do the work form and then try to see it along this, yeah, the five days people. We got about 10 respondents we have reached and then 250 respondents, but there are some inconsistency in the treatment of the form. Some people, some, Gave it out, but they didn't fit into the class of people we're looking for to provide the information we need. So we have a valid response. Am I taking a lot of time? Okay, so we have some things we try to know what knowledge, awareness of imagine what I will have in Nigeria. How many of the, the teachers or lecturers that have conducted uh, research in this area? How many of them are teaching courses in there? How many of them are attending training in these industries and you know, in uh, institutions. Now, how about the degree programs or, or, or presented programs that are being taught in this area? And then look at the overall cyber security audience. So, the result we have here, in, first of all, first of all, talks about it, how many number of participants in, so yeah, 60% yes, we are aware of the fourth semester revolution. You know, but you know, 79 so said uh, they've not conducted any research in this area at all. You know? And then how many of them are teaching this in this area? Uh, yeah, so it's still they're not teaching any, any course in this area. You know, but about, um, you see, participants that attended the training, so we discovered that about 62% uh, of them are one year. You know, but there's something we discovered that most of this training, when we are just asynchronous training that people derive from what is the training side, like uh, MIT courseway and Stanford course. Mm -hmm. So people go in there. I try to listen on this, but there's something we discovered. They are learning, but they don't understand much of it. You know, the number of five degree programs, they will discover that this is an interesting aspect of the world. You know, now we have some programs, both uh, graduates and undergraduate programs that they have. And then, uh, but the, what are the views of the readiness? And the 60% you know, we're not 60% say both the government and the institution are not it's possibly highly driven by power supply. And generally, the, the level of intangible assets, which is very low, that is what many of them feel that. But you know, one thing we discover is that from here, we believe we answer the question, but you know, we believe some of them believe that yeah. they are oh, teaching, they have some program. About 50% of them believe they have programs in both post-credit and undergraduate programs. But you won't necessarily ask them the courses, what we call courses, the courses are made up of. A program. If you are having a program in maybe in computer security, the courses are the model, models you teach in cyber security. So we discover that they are having a program, PSC programs in cyber security, but actually it's more of a buzzword. What I mean by buzzword is that the, the, the content does not reflect the title of the program. You know, so I'm thinking that so when they go attend some of this uh, training, as it was training, they like what they see. But because the, the university in Nigeria, there's what they call National University Commission, they set up content for each of the programs. So, but each university have right to mark any program or change them to what they like, but the content are defined by the university commission. 
So what the most of them do to become relevant or fit into the modern society, they try to change the programs to relate to modern day programs. But the contents are not exactly what it's supposed to be. And some of them are handicapped because you can't change those contents, except the university commission accept it, get contact uh, to change it. So what they are doing more of is have a name of a program by leaving the letters, but the content are not what uh, reflective of what, the kind of skills that they want. So we recommend that since they're having this training of asynchronous, the government should help them to continue the them at least by getting the understanding of what it is and then taking on the program. Then we also recommend that academic community should focus more attention in conducting deep research scientific research. But I know this is a bit challenging because of the, the cost they want to get and the, the level of intangible assets to support the system. But it's something we are looking for. We are just we recommending them. Another thing is protect intellectual properties. A lot of them are really worried that, I mean, what do you protect? What do you do? What, how do you protect? If I register a patent here and by this few, Hours, the company finds it, goes use it, and I see the courts for many years. I'm sitting in the court. I mean, how, how, how long will it take me to get justice? Because the justice system is part of intangible assets. So they are thinking that the justice system is not fair and does not protect them. And even the police, government law enforcement agencies, is a difficult one to them. And so it's a bit challenging to them that it's part of the thing that is really driving low that need to invest in academic activities. Uh, result of pattern and intellectual property. So, because if you don't have money, you can't protect it. Just you can't even go to court and get justice. You want. So, what is the essence? So, you look for low hanging fruit and get this in and even more. And it's affecting the system, not helping it to grow. So, as it's, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr.